Recording, recording. Ooh, hello class. Hold on, let me pull up my script. <laughs> um, hey guys, it's me, Reef. Uh, uh, also, also Lucas, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna tell you some interesting things about New Hampshire and why you should come on down to the 13 colonies. Now, now we're here in the first place because we wanted to seek out our fortune through trade with England. Oh, I'm stuck in the door. Through fur? Fur? That's, that's not fur. Through fur, fish, and timber. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> my colony was created as a proprietary colony. The New England Council gave the charter to Captain John Mason. And for a short period of time, the colonies of Massachusetts Bay and New Hampshire rejoined. The government was comprised of a governor, the governor's advisors, and a representative assembly. <laughs> the people in New Hampshire. Uh, where was I? <laughs> The people in New Hampshire were separatists who hailed from the United Church of Christ. After some years, the state was mainly Protestant until Greeks, Roman Catholics, and Russian Orthodox began to arrive in the late 1800s. New Hampshire was a humid continental climate with warm, humid summers, long, cold, and snowy winters. Rain is pretty evenly distributed all year. In towns along the coast, the colonists made their living through fishing, through, through fishing, whaling, shipbuilding, and shipping. The economy in other parts of colonial New Hampshire was based on timber products, fur trade, maple syrup, copper, livestock products, horses, rum, whiskey, and beer. Alright, so recording. Okay. Oh, okay. Hey guys, I'm going to explain why you should come down to the 13 colonies and why Georgia might be the right place for you. Oh, Although yeah. James Albrothrop initially made it as a refuge for London's sons and devoted prisoners, it was turned into an area of protect themselves against an attack on Florida. Now, I'm going to explain to you the government. Georgia became a royal colony in 1752, and people were not allowed to self-govern until 21 years later when the charter expired. Three men were allowed to vote except for religion was pretty simple. Only religion not allowed. Geography as you can see, it was good soil and good for farming. They had a lot of farm. And the climate was warm. The economy was comprised of a lot of agriculture. And most people lived on small farms. This is, this is the small farm. They mainly lived on the small with just family, just mainly to feed themselves. But then some lived on extensive plantations with usually many slaves. This is the plantation house I made. It's more luxurious as you can see. Pretty nice. And then, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, that's it for the Southern Colony. Wow, thank you. I Okay, where where did you go? Okay, get on top of the hay. Alright, start us off. So um now we're gonna do now we're gonna do New York. So this is New York. The yeah. reason that New York was founded was it was taken over for political reasons. But the original was owned by a Dutch 
and then the English saw it as a ideal trade center, so they took over. Uh, the forms of government that New York had, well, it's not really a form of government, but it's just talking about the government. Uh, New York became a royal colony in 1685. King James II made Sir Edmund Andros the royal governor. He ruled the colony without a legislator, causing the citizens to get angry and, you know, not enjoy his ruling. A representative legislature was included by the government with popularly elected officials. The, the forms of religion that New York, the New York colony had, was there were there weren't really a form of religion. It was kind of just you can follow whatever religion you want, and uh, there were Catholics, Jews. Luther Lutherans and Quakers, among others. Some of the oh wait, what the? Uh, do you want to tell us about the geography and climate of New York? I would love to, brief. Awesome. Let's hear it. <laughs> so basically, the geography and climate of New York included lowlands, mountains, coastal plains, and farmland. It was a pretty mild climate and there were warm summers and there was warm summers and cold winters which made it really ideal for farming. Hmm. Now let me let me uh Would talk you like to, to you explain about the... the economy? Yes, yes, I'd love to. That, that would that would be explanatory. Alright. Let me get up here because I'm the big man talking. Yes, I agree, you are the big man. Um so, most of the economy of New York was comprised of agriculture and manufacturing. Some agricultural products were cattle, grain, rice, indigo, and wheat. Manufacturing was centered around shipbuilding and ironworks. I think that just about concludes our, uh, our reasons as to why you should campaign for moving down to the 13 colonies was so good. Now we actually got a visitor. What's his name? William, William, William something? Yeah, we actually got William to move down to, what is this, New York with us. And then here's, what's his name? What's his name? Don't hit him. He's a visitor. Stop, stop. What's his name? Froggy the Frog. Yeah, Froggy the Frog. We got William and Froggy the Frog over here in our, uh, in our New York empire they couldn't, they couldn't resist coming on down to the 13 colonies yeah i know we were, we're simply so persuasive that they just could not resist 